the nature of the hero V is a sort of reborn Guy Fawkes. And to American audiences, Guy Fawkes probably doesn't mean much. In the English imagination, Guy Fawkes is a Catholic terrorist who uh, attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament. And every 5th of November, uh, because he failed to blow up the Houses of Parliament, his effigy is burnt. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. It's been really, really cool as a learning experience, preparing for this project, reading like about the gunpowder plot and all of, just reading all the histories and, and all the things that we reference in, in the script. The gunpowder plot was, it was in 1605 and um, the Catholics were being really oppressed in England. Elizabeth came to the throne in 1558 and she ruled England for 45 years, or very close to 45 years. In that time, her relationship with the English Catholics, of course, changed. Elizabeth herself is well aware that she is living and governing in a Europe which is divided between Catholic and Protestant, in which Catholic and Protestant powers are at war. She tries to appeal to as many different religious groups as, as she possibly can. What I think rarely causes problems is that the Pope in 1570 excommunicates Elizabeth and declares that her Catholic subjects need no longer obey her. Elizabeth began to persecute the Catholics with the, the recusancy laws. She began to take away their lands. She began to prosecute them for holding mass. Recusancy laws were laws which invoked punishment for those who did not attend services of the established Protestant church in England. Everyone within England uh, is worried by the fact the Queen's not married. Almost the first rule of any sovereign is to make sure there is a guaranteed succession. Without a succession, you can't be certain of what's going to happen in the future. In a sense, she doesn't look further than her own lifetime. Indeed, she doesn't name James VI of Scotland as her successor um, until she's on her deathbed. James VI of Scotland was, of course, a Protestant. We should never forget that. But he was also the son of the Catholic Mary, Queen of Scots. And as such, he could almost present himself as being all things to all men. The Catholics in England, desperate as they were, were looking for some relief from James, and they built hopes on some very vague assurances that he gave their representatives before 1603. So you have this Catholic community who believe now that, okay, James is gonna become King of England, and he's gonna grant toleration to everybody, and everything's gonna be a lot better than it is now. Things do change to some degree. When James comes to the throne, he suspends enforcement of the recusancy laws, but then, James and his government sit down and have to face priorities. They have to see where the bedrock of their support actually lies, and it actually lies in the Protestant establishment. He says that the recusancy laws are in force, they will be enforced. People have to exercise bare conformity. Only a tiny, tiny minority of people actually want to take action against these policies. They are the zealots, if you like. Once a uh, law has been created by Parliament and endorsed by the Sovereign, people tend to obey it. So in order to change things, uh, you need to really change the policy itself, and that means you need to change the people who make the policy. And the way to do that is to change the Sovereign. The so-called gunpowder plot really should be called the Catesby plot, because he's the person who dreamed it up, he's the person who brought people in, and it's his vision that this plot represents. He was from by all accounts, he was a very charismatic person. He was um, highly intelligent. He was also a man who was very much a Catholic. To my mind, I don't think Catesby had any hopes of James. Catesby is actually motivated by something much more fundamental, a desire for revenge. Revenge on a state which has let him down and let his family down over decades. He is the person behind the choice of Guy Fawkes. And I think a lot of the timing is to do with the feeling that uh, unless they act at that point, they're never going to see a Catholic England. Catesby's plan was very simple. 
It was to stage a military coup. And the first strike in the military coup was to be the destruction of the House of Lords at the state opening of Parliament, when everyone who was anyone in Jacobean England would have been present in that small crowded chamber. The king, the queen, the king's eldest son, the nobles, the bishops, the leading gentlemen of the shires. You have a lot of the English Catholics who over the last 15 years or so, because of the, the recusancy laws and the persecution that had gone on in England under Elizabeth, had almost exiled themselves to Europe to go and fight under the King of Spain's flag, and Guy Fawkes was one of them. Fawkes is brought in by Robert Catesby's sidekick, Thomas Winter. He meets Fawkes, he talks to Fawkes, he tells them that something is being planned in England and would he like to be a part of it? Fawkes says yes. Originally the plotters planned to tunnel under the foundations of Westminster and to that end they rented a house adjacent to the House of Lords. Unfortunately they found the, the going hard. The foundations of Westminster, the medieval foundations, were very, very thick. Luck turned in their favour. A ground floor vault, cellar, directly under the House of Lords was being vacated and they decided that this would be where they stacked the gunpowder. It was Guy Fawkes's job to pose as the servant of the man who had taken the lease. The plot was given away through an anonymous warning letter to a Catholic nobleman, Lord Monteagle. He immediately took the letter to the court. The evening of the 4th of November, they searched the cellars of Parliament House and they discovered Guy Fawkes waiting there ready for Parliament to sit the following day to set off the train of powder and blow the government buildings up. Well, of course, he was captured. He was uh, interrogated. He was sent to the Tower of London. Finally, on the 7th of November, he cracked and he started to name some of those that were involved along with him. Those that were captured were taken back to the Tower of London. They were tried and the foregone conclusion and they were executed. He was, to some degree, the expendable one, the man with the expertise. So he went into the danger zone. And of course, ultimately, that's why he's the one who's arrested. The British have celebrated, in that peculiar British way that we have, the attempt to blow up Parliament on the 5th of November, which was the date of the plot, by burning Guy Fawkes in effigy on a huge bonfire and sending up fireworks. Uh, it's known as Fireworks Night or Guy Fawkes Night, and children traditionally make their own guy, which is a, a sort of made out of pillowcases and bits of straw, whatever you happen to have to hand. You wheel it round shouting, penny for the guy, and adults give you money. And with the money, you buy the fireworks, you build your big bonfire on any piece of common land, a heath, a garden, you know, public park, whatever. <laughs> I saw once in a pub in the north of Ireland um, a placard behind the bar which said Guy Fawkes, the only man to enter the Houses of Parliament with honest intentions. We have a very different perspective uh, on this, historical perspective on Guy Fawkes than English people would have. I think that the continuing um, celebration of gunpowder plot, the strength of the celebrations, is part of that enduring British wish um, to defy authority, to, if you like, cock a snook at the, the government. You're never told what would have happened if they had blown up the Houses of Parliament. And I think it's, it's unfortunate because a lot of people now have a distorted picture as to what that event really means. I believe that if the Monteagle letter had not been received, I'm almost certain that it would have succeeded. In all likelihood, um, nothing much would have changed apart from the fact that England would have had to find a new king. The chances are that Protestant England would have risen against them, there would have been a bloody civil war, and in all probability, the plotters would have been defeated. What I think perhaps we underestimate is how much mystery still surrounds the plot. Because those people like Catesby died without ever 
giving a confession without ever giving evidence, there is still a lot about th their motives in detail that died with them. Hi there movie lovers! Did you know that back in the day films weren't dubbed over in other languages? Instead it was common for foreign language films to take over a movie set at night and shoot their own version of the film. For example, an old Spanish version of Dracula was filmed all at night in about half the time and even received better reviews. Make sure to click below to subscribe or on the side for more awesome content.